Good morning, everyone. My name is Dave Izbitsky. I'm a developer evangelist with Amazon, focused on apps and games. Today, we're going to talk about HTML5 mobile web apps. Specifically, I'm going to walk you through the process to test, submit, and then how you can earn revenue with your web apps. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start out by giving you an overview specifically of what web apps are. Then I'll walk you through the developer portal today and we'll go over what some of the changes are for web apps. So web apps, if you've submitted an Android app before, are very similar. There's just a couple of steps that we'll need to take that differentiate web apps from Android apps and I'll walk you through those here. I'll also show you how to debug and test your web apps. Now the good news for this is that you've probably already debugged and tested your mobile website. You can use the same exact tools today. So if you're using an IDE or you're using the Chrome debug tools, you can do all of the debugging and testing with those and then you simply point the developer portal to where your website is. But I'll walk you through all of that. And then we'll end up looking at in-app purchasing API for web apps. So this is an API that will allow you to monetize your mobile web app site where you can sell digital goods subscriptions and entitlements through Amazon. So for those not familiar, the Amazon mobile app distribution program is available in nearly 200 countries around the globe. It allows you to submit Android apps for both Android devices and Kindle Fire devices, as well as now web apps. So you can take your existing mobile website that you have today and you can put it in front of active Amazon customers who are already downloading apps. And as you can see on the right, your mobile website will appear as an actual app. So this can help you solve some of the common concerns you might have with a website today. You know, how are people finding me? How does it perform on a mobile device? And how will I make money? Now web apps through the Amazon App Store utilize responsive web design. So if you've already got a mobile website where you're using CSS3, HTML5, and you have things set up for viewports that scale across the different screens, you're going to find all of that stuff just works here with web apps. It also takes advantage of the same design style. So whenever you make a change to your mobile website, you're going to see that change reflected in the app instantly. There's no need to go back into the developer portal and update any of your code like you would for an Android app, any of the changes that you do on your existing mobile website will be reflected instantly in your mobile app. And all of the web apps that you're going to see me walk through today are built on the underlying foundation of the open source Chromium project. So today that's built on version 25. And if you've been targeting anything through the Chromium project, that'll just work when you're using web apps. Kindle Fire devices also have a runtime that allow JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS to be GPU accelerated. So whether you're using a Kindle Fire HD or HDX device, you're going to find that your applications have near native speed. There's also built-in HTML5 support for a bunch of different APIs. So if you're using touch events, for example, CSS pointer events, or you're using uh, Canvas T 2D or WebGL, you're going to see all of that just built in. And this chart, you can get the current chart right off of the developer portal. Web apps on Amazon also give the ability to get noticed. So traffic to your mobile website today may be discovered largely through search engine traffic. By moving your web app into the Amazon App Store as an app, you're going to get all of the benefits of being in an app store versus on a website. So users will find your app by browsing categories on their Kindle Fire devices, as well as different promotions that Amazon may be running. One of the new developer select programs that we have announced uh, allow web apps to get to the front and take full advantage of the power of Amazon. So your apps will actually be showcased on Amazon.com. 
you have the ability to take advantage of coins, and you'll also get the AWS discount of up to 25% off of your services for your apps. You also have the ability to monetize your app through the in-app purchasing API. So registration for the Amazon mobile app distribution program is completely free. There's no charge to go ahead and put your mobile web app in the app store. There's no restrictions on existing monetization techniques that you may already be using. And if you so choose, we offer a free in-app purchasing API that I'll walk you through in a little bit. This API allows you to sell in-game currency, things like expansion packs, or subscriptions to magazines. So let's go ahead and look at submitting a new web app. So if you haven't yet, you can go over to developer.amazon.com forward slash app store. And on that screen, you're going to have the ability to add a new app. So here you can see when I hit the drop down, I have Android, mobile web, and PC and Mac. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click mobile web. And then we're going to be taken to the new web app submission screen. So let's go ahead and jump over into a browser. And let me actually show you what this looks like. So we're going to go to developer.amazon.com forward slash app store. And you'll see this URL right up here. And we're going to get information about the different tools and the different services offered through the Amazon Developer Services and App Store. You can see up here I'm already signed in. So I'm going to go over to Apps and Services. I'm going to click on My Apps. And you'll see I have a list of apps I've already submitted as well as apps I've already published. I'm going to go over here down to the bottom. And you'll see Add a New App. I'm going to select mobile web and let's go ahead and give this app a title. So we'll call this HTML5 web app webinar. We can optionally give it a SKU. The category we're going to select as entertainment and then I'm going to use my default support information. So once you've registered for a developer account, again that account is completely free, there's no subscription fee, you're going to have support information in there already, like your website, your email address, and your other contact information. By just keeping this box checked, it'll use that information on file. So let's hit Save. And now I'm right into the process, just like any other app for the App Store, to go ahead and submit my app. So the first tab you can see up here has a green checkbox. And as we fill out each tab, we will get a green checkbox next to each section. So right now, I've been given an application key. You can see my category. And then the Developer Select program, which we previously mentioned, you can see right in here, we can click on it and get more information about that program. I'm going to move over to Availability. We can make this app available in all countries and regions or select just different areas or different countries. We're going to say all. We're going to say this app is new. It hasn't been released anywhere else. We're going to hit save. And now you can see we have a green checkbox set for availability. We're going to go over to description. Demo for an HTML5 web app. And we're going to go ahead and hit Save. Now when I click in Images and Multimedia, you'll see we have a small icon. We may already have a resource that's 114 by 114. We also need to create a large icon that's 512 by 512. This icon is so that the carousel on Kindle Fire devices 
when that shows up, you'll have a much uh, a greater detailed image that people will see. And then I'm going to walk through how to actually take screenshots from devices for a web app in a little bit. So let's jump over to content rating. And we're going to say none for all of these. And hit save. So at this point, my web app has been completely filled out except for some screenshots and images and the actual app file which contains the running code for our web app. So let's switch over real quick to the PowerPoint. And let's talk about the next step, which is setting up our web app manifest file. So when we go over to that app files tab, we're going to have a new area called the web app manifest. And what the web app manifest does is it allows us to understand that you're the owner of whatever website you're pointing us to. So remember, these are mobile web apps that are hosted by you on your own web infrastructure. We're simply wrapping that around into a Amazon or Android web view and hosting that in the App Store for you. So you can see here I have a verification key and then I need to verify my app URL with that manifest. That verification key is like any other JSON file. So you've got different key and ID pairs. We're going to have a key, a version, a type, and when it's last updated. So what's important here is if you are on a hoster where you haven't set up to return JSON yet, you're going to need to make sure that your web server can actually return JSON. I've seen people get a little bit tripped up on that, especially if they're running older versions of IIS, which couldn't return JSON correctly. What I've done for this webinar is I've set up an EC2 instance on Amazon Web Services, and I'm going to show you how I set that up in order to return JSON. So let's go back over to the developer portal. And we're going to click on App Files. And down here under App Manifest, you can see the verification key for the app we just created, HTML5 Web App Webinar, and then you can see Last Update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, and then we're going to log into our EC2 instance. Now this is for demo purposes only. You may have your own web infrastructure with a different type of setup. But what I've done for this demo is I've created a new small instance. This is running Windows Server 2008 and IIS 7. And what I've done over here is I've created a folder that I've called status. And inside status, we have a CSS folder with some standard CSS, a JavaScript file, and our index.html page. So as you can see, this is just straight up HTML that I'd be running on any other mobile website. So let's open this app manifest. We're going to paste in the new app manifest key. And we're going to save this. So you can see this is the one that we just created. And let's go ahead and get the URL for this and make sure that it's coming across. So the first thing we want to do is we want to call into that website to ensure it's working. So you can see over here, I'm calling into my EC2 instance, and I'm calling into that status folder I've just created. And you can see this page is loading up live, and in fact, if you want to hit that site right now, you're, you're free to do that. This will definitely scale up. And you can see it's running live over here. This is my uh, dashboard console for my EC2 instance. And now we need to make sure that our web app manifest is actually returning JSON. So if we come over here, you can see the URL is that same status, but I have web app manifest.json. This is the same file we just edited. Let's go ahead and refresh this, and you can see it has the last updated time correctly and the verification key. So what we need to do is we need to copy this full URL come back to the developer portal, and then you're going to see a box here where we can verify our app URL and manifest.
Now this URL is very important because once you've submitted and published your app, you won't be able to go in and just edit this on the fly. If you move your web app manifest at any time, you're going to need to go back in and resubmit your app. Let me go ahead and paste this in. What's also important to understand is that wherever I put the web app manifest JSON file will set the security for the app. So in this instance, the app will be able to access anything in the status folder, but it will not be able to go up to the, root, uh, the parent level and hit any of my other sites. You can also turn on, and it's recommended, SSL for all of the web traffic. So let's go ahead and verify this. And you'll see it's now verified that that web app manifest file is returning the correct information that it should. So it knows that I am, in fact, the owner of this site. And I just need to go ahead and click I certify this app. Now, if you have any specific instructions for the testers, you can also put that down here. So for example, if you have some kind of in-app purchasing that you're doing yourself on your website, make sure you let them know over in here. I'm going to say I certify, and then hit Save. And you can see up at the top, we've now had our entire web app manifest saved correctly. So the last piece is going to be for images and multimedia. Now before I do that too, I think what would be great is to kind of show you the code that we're actually running in this app. So let me jump over here. And you can see, for anybody who's ever heard of an online game called World of Warcraft, that's what this website is doing. It's going out and it's looking at the World of Warcraft servers and it's pulling down the status for each server. So if a server is up, it's green, and if a server is down, it's red. It looks like it's a good day. <laughs> All of the servers are up. So that code is freely available. You can actually get that off of my personal GitHub on Dizbitsky. And I want to walk you through so that you see there's nothing special in here. This is just a straight up HTML5 file, so you can see doc type HTML. I'm referencing jQuery and my own WoW API JS, and then I'm just building up a bunch of div tags down here. Our phone.css file, so this is where you would do your responsive web design and you have your viewports set up, whatever other kind of transforms set up, all of that is just straight CSS. And then in the WoW API, you can see I have one function called get realm status all, which I'm doing on the onload function. I'm coming in and I'm just styling each background. And then the rest of this magic happens from Blizzard's own API that you can see I'm doing a JSON call here to the Battle.net server. So that's it. This application, if we come over here and we look on the Amazon App Store, this application took me all of an hour to write, and it was published very quickly. So we'll look up here, apps for Android, and we'll say, wow, realm status. And you can see that same application is actually published and live out through the App Store. So we've got our web app manifest file. We've got our web code running. We've verified that we're the owner. Now, how do we get screenshots of that website actually running as an app into the website? So here's an example of the screenshots I took for my own app. I have a small icon and a large icon. And then at the bottom, you'll notice you're seeing that little full screen widget, which happens on Kindle Fire devices when you're in full screen mode. So you can definitely see this was running as an app when I uploaded the screenshot to the App Store. Now the way you can go about doing that is you can download the web app tester tool and there are instructions right here at developer.amazon.com SDK web app screenshots for how to do that on each device. So let me show you where that web app tester is. So we're looking for web app tester. You can download this both to a Kindle Fire device or any Android device you may own. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to load up that same URL. 
So for our demo, that URL is going to be our EC2 instance. And when we run it, it's actually going to run as an application. So we're able to see in real time what our mobile web app will look like on a device. Now I've already installed this web app tester locally so that we can use it for future demos. If you want to follow along, you can go ahead and install the web app tester right now through the Amazon App Store. Once we have that web app tester running on a Kindle device, we simply point it to the URL. So let me go ahead and switch over. And I have a new HDX device. This is a Kindle Fire 7-inch HDX that I'm running. I'm going to open this up. Everyone will see my password. <laughs> but you would need the device. All right, let's let that zoom in for a second here. Okay, and I know it's going to be a little fuzzy, but you'll get the gist of this actually running on a physical device. So I have this Amazon App Store app installed. You can see I have a couple of different Amazon apps. And in fact, we have the WoW Realm Status app. If I run this, you'll see that same app is running just like it did in the browser. And let's go ahead and run the web app tester app. And we're going to scroll back. And what I'm going to do here is try and zoom in for you so you can see that exact URL. So you can see I'm pointing it to our EC2 instance. US West to compute. And if we go back to our window over here, you'll see it's the same URL. Let me zoom up so everybody can see that up top here. Okay. And then we're going to switch over. Let's zoom back out. I'm going to tell it to use the Amazon Web View. And so what it's going to do in real time is it's going to load up that website and then make it look like an app. So you can see this is actually pulling live from our mobile website inside as if it's an app. And there's a couple of other options that you get. Let me zoom down here for you. At the bottom, so you'll see I have the ability to clear all of my different browser data. Look at its app cache expired cookies, session cookies, and history. So it's a great way in real time to actually see what your mobile website will look like. Now the way that you get a screenshot when you're running is you hit the power button and the volume down button. And this will work on any of the Kindle Fire devices. So let me switch back over and show you what a screenshot looks like. And let's run our application. And I'm going to take a screenshot now. You're going to, you should hear it. And you'll see it'll move back. Let me just take another one in case that came across too quick. So I now have a screenshot. Let's uh, zoom back here. And where those screenshots will actually occur is when you connect your Kindle device to your Windows or your Mac machine. Underneath Kindle internal storage, you're going to have a pictures folder and a screenshots folder. So you can see here, these are where I pulled the screenshots from a Windows machine. And if I'm on a Mac machine, you're going to want to use the Android file transfer tool. So this is a free tool available from Google. You can download. And this is how, if you've got an Android device today, you're probably, probably already using this uh, to access your Android device. It's the same way. So we're going to take those screenshots and then we're going to upload them under Images and Multimedia. Screenshots, I'm simply going to click here, and then I would point to where those screenshots are located. Once I do that and I click Save, my app is actually ready to be published. So it's just a simple matter of hitting the Publish button. So we've got our web app set up. We verified our app manifest. Everything's looking good, but maybe we want to make some changes to how that actually appears on a device. So how do we go ahead and debug and test our web app? 
So testing your web content across multiple devices, we already know, can be extremely time consuming. So the web app tester tool that you just saw me load gives you a way to actually see what that web content will look like as an app running both on Kindle Fire devices as well as Android devices. So you can run your mobile website as an app in real time and greatly speed up any changes that you're doing in order to see what that looks like. So you've just seen this when we ran it on top of our Kindle. And we can also debug. So you can use your favorite IDE to go ahead and debug. So you saw I was actually using WebStorm. I know some people just load things up in Sublime. You can use the same exact tooling that you're using today. But what we also do is we optionally allow you to tie into the Chrome Dev Tools. So you may already be using the Chrome Dev Tools for other projects that you're on. And if you're not, the Chrome Dev Tools are a free download you can get off of Google. It's an extension that you're going to load into the Chrome browser, and it's going to use the Android Debug Bridge, or ADB, as a way to connect to your actual device. So what I'm going to do is I'm physically going to run the app on my device, but then I get to see it in a browser. So what will happen is when we're running our tool, and in a second I'll show you this on the actual device, I have the option of doing it over a USB cable, so I'm going to swipe from the top to get the quick menu when I'm using the web app tester tool, and I can select both network or ADB, which is USB. Once I've done that, the web app tester tool will give me a URL on my own local browser that I can go ahead and I can connect with the dev tools to that running app. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So you can see here we have our web app tester tool already running. I'm going to swipe out of the full screen mode here by hitting the side widget. I'm going to swipe down and you'll see I have web app tools enabled over ADB or over the network. Now both my computer and the actual Kindle device are connected to the same wireless network already. So I'm going to tap on over the network. You can see it's giving us a URL that we can go ahead and connect to. So I'm going to load that URL up. Okay. 192.168.257.922. And now I need to actually run this app. And like magic, you now see all of the source for the same HTML app that was running on our Kindle Fire device. So I get all of the great debug tools that you normally would in Chrome, and I can actually change things. I can change the source, all of this in real time. And then if I hit the body, so you can see body, center, div, so maybe I want my div status. If I switch over, I just want to show you this on the camera. I know this is going to be hard to see. Uh, actually, you know what, maybe if we do it this way, you can see it. Now, if I hit any of these styles, now you can see in real time how that's being highlighted on the actual device. So my entire div status is being highlighted, or I can hit this one, and you can see the individual divs are being highlighted as we move across. But this is full debugging on the device for a web app that's running on a Kindle. This happens to be my Kindle Fire HDX. That's how easy it is to go ahead and debug. So we've seen setting up a web app through the developer portal only takes a couple minutes. We have it running on an actual device. We've tested it on that device, and we've debugged that on a, the device. Maybe we want to start monetizing through that web app now through the Amazon App Store. So let's take a look at the in-app purchasing API for web apps. So there are three things that you can sell through your app on a, the Amazon App Store. You can sell consumables. So think of these as digital goods. These may be power-ups or lives in your game. Entitlements. So entitlements are something you buy once, and then you have access across all of your devices that you've deployed this app to. Typically, you may see something like a free or a pro version, and upgrading to the pro version perhaps maybe removes ads or gives me unlimited use. And then we have the ability to do subscriptions. So if you have consumable content, media content, maybe in a magazine format, and you want a subscription based for your web app, you can do that as well. 
Now, in-app purchasing for web apps work exactly the same way for Android apps. So everything that I'm showing you here in the next couple of slides is the same across all of the in-app purchases, regardless of whether you're doing web or Android. And there are a couple of different responsibilities. So what you're going to be responsible for in your app is presenting a catalog of items, unlocking the functionality, downloading the remotely delivered content, and displaying and using the downloaded digital goods. I'm going to show you what this actually looks like in JavaScript and what it looks like on the actual device in a second, but I thought it would be important to walk you through all of these steps for those who haven't seen in-app purchasing. And then you also need to think about the Amazon App Store client and how it needs to manage the purchase flow. And these things map back and forth that you're going to see in calls. So in a live environment, so if this is published in the actual App Store, these, the Amazon App Store client, and in the case of web apps, it's an actual JavaScript file, is going to do all of the work for us. When we run stuff locally in our test environment, we're going to use something called the SDK tester. Now the SDK tester is not available in the Amazon App Store. You actually get it as part of the Amazon App Store SDK you would download. So let me show you where to get that. On developer.amazon.com, as you can see up here, we're going to go click on SDK and Tools. And when I click there, you'll see a Download SDK button. This is going to have everything that you need across all of the free Amazon developer services. And so if I open up my local finder window and show you what's actually in this, you'll see one of those folders is called web, one is iOS, and one is Android. We're going to take a look in this web folder in a little bit. It's basically just filled with samples today because you don't need any specific code all of the code for in-app purchasing is a JavaScript file we host, but underneath Android in-app purchasing tools, and let me go ahead and highlight that, is where the APK is for the Amazon SDK tester. This is a tool that you're going to load on your local device like you would any other APK. So you can use the Android transfer tool, you could go into Eclipse and deploy it there, however you want to load it on your device. But on your device, let me zoom over here, turn it on. And let's unlock it. Let's get to the front you'll see the SDK tester tool. And so we're going to need to run this to do any kind of in-app purchasing. So just make sure that you set that up first. And the way that an in-app purchase is going to work through the JavaScript API is you're basically going to have an app purchase, app purchase handler and you're going to call out to the Amazon service JS. I'm going to show you what that code actually looks like that we're pulling from the web. So let's just take a quick look at some of the APIs before I drop into the code. Every call that you're going to initiate from the Amazon service is going to have a response object. And that object is going to let you call some things on it. So the first thing is you can get the user ID response. And this is going to allow us to get an app specific user ID so that we can make sure moving forward if they've purchased content, it's on all their devices you're going to have a purchase update response. So this is going to give you a list of receipts and other purchases, as well as revealed SKU since the left's offset. And you're going to get an item data response. So you're going to get information keyed by SKUs about any data that's coming across. And then the purchase response. The purchase response is going to give you different types of status like succeeded, pending, or failed. And then there's a couple other purchase handlers. Now, if we were doing this in Android, we would need to implement all of these handlers. The only thing we need to do with a web app is include the JavaScript file. And you're going to see a lot of this. There's already boilerplate code that we can just bring down. So on SDK available, the first thing you need to make sure is that they have the in-app purchasing services ready. We're going to also check to see if we're in sandbox mode. So you're going to see in a second 
what I do is I set up an alert box that says I'm in test mode so that I know I'm actually lo testing locally. And then on get user ID response, we're going to get the user ID and then so on and so on. So you can see we can get data, we can get purchase, and we can update the response. So an example of what this would actually look like in JavaScript that you can add to your own mobile website, we're calling into the Amazon Web App and then enable API tester function. And that function takes a variable called Amazon WA tester. And then we're going to go down and you can see I have different functions here for clicking a button. Now this is all part of the button handler SDK sample you just saw as part of the Amazon SDK. We'll load that up in a second and then I'll walk you through how it works. But you can see what we're doing is we're simply calling into the enable API tester and then we're registering an, an observer. So you can see right here, as long as the SDK is available, if we get back a response that we're in a sandbox, we're going to go throw up an alert that says running in test mode. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get the purchase updates with the offset from the beginning. And then you can see these are the other responses that we're just implementing down here with no functionality currently. Okay, so let's take a look at what all of that looks like. We're going to come over to WebStorm. And this is the button clicker SDK sample. So you can see up here, this is from the same download that we got off of developer.amazon.com. Underneath that web folder, there was a samples folder. The sample, if you want to follow along, that I'm looking at is button clicker. We're going to open up index.html. You can see it's an HTML file. And then at the top, immediately you'll see we have two different Amazon Web App API JavaScript libraries. So the first one is the full API, and the second one is actually a web version of the tester. This allows you to test in-app purchases in a browser in addition to doing it on an actual device. And I'm going to show you both. And then we're also making a reference to the button clicker.js file. So like any good developer, the first thing that I did when I saw this URL was open it up in a browser. <laughs> and so let me show you what that looks like over here. Here is the web API. And then this one is the web API tester. So that variable that you saw in the code, the, code, the Amazon WA tester, that variable is actually being set for you in this J, JS file. And that's what gets passed into that function when you initialize. Let's close this. And then you can see the rest of this is going to mock up functionality for actually purchasing. So I've got mock up the JavaScript in-app purchasing bindings. I've got information that returns a uh, user ID. So all of this is set so that it actually returns what the API is expecting and allows you to test this inside of a browser. You can see we're also doing things here to mock up game circle bindings. And then the API itself over here, you can see this is where everything is implemented in the API that you would call from JavaScript. So all of my callbacks, all of my response objects, everything is in here the actual Amazon in-app purchasing API, you can say it's set up as a prototype. I've got my purchasing observer, item types, status, and so on. So like any other JavaScript library, you're free to browse and see all of the code that's actually happening right here on the web. Now let's take a look at the website itself. So I've got an index.html. You can see I've got three buttons, red, green, and blue and then a main button. And what this application is going to do is it's going to give us in-app purchases to change the color of the button. So I can change the button from its original just whatever web color your browser is giving into red, green, or blue. And then I'm also going to get a certain number of clicks. And those clicks, I believe, are either 9 or 10. And when those clicks run out, I'm giving the opportunity to buy more clicks. You can see the button's CSS file is just applying some simple styles. So we've got background color red, blue, and green, as well as what the active color is based on our in-app purchase. Then let's look at buttonclicker.js. 
and we'll scroll up here. So I've got some states, I've got refresh paid state, and I'm looking to set things to be either locked or active based on the receipt from an in-app purchase. I'm going to scroll down. And you're going to see when we actually show the buy button, we're giving it a skew. So our skews are sample red button, sample green button, a sample blue button with a subscription for one month, and sample clicks. And then we're calling into that Amazon Web Apps in-app purchase purchase item. We're also getting an on-purchase receipt, whether it's already successful or they've had it already. We're calling handle receipt, which you can see down here. Now everything is going to be stored locally, so we're just storing into local storage for the web app, you know, what is been purchased and what hasn't for our receipts. You may want to implement it in a different way. There's nothing to say you can't implement all of that server side as well in your own mobile app. Now these SKUs, where these SKUs are coming from, when we test, is a file called amazon.sdktester.json. You can see that over here on the left. So that's included with this sample. And these are the SKUs that I'm offering for purchase. You can see a red button, green button, the blue button subscription for one month, and the clicks. Now, if you're testing on a website, because we have the JavaScript tester that you just saw, it's going to need to find this file in the same directory that the website is hosted in. So because it's right here in the root, next to index, you're fine, and you'll be able to test in the web. On an actual device, let me pull up my device. Switch over here a so. sec. You need to make sure that it's in your SD storage. So you can see I've actually copied it down. And then right here, you can see I've copied that JSON file over. As long as that's on your local device in SD storage, the app SDK tester is going to find that when we run. And this is going to give us the ability to test both on our device as well as on the web. Okay, so let's switch back. Let's go back to our ECT, EC2 server here. I'm going to show you what I've done. Under our WW root folder, you'll notice I have a new folder I call the button. And I've taken that SDK sample and I've moved it up to my website. And you can see here, Amazon SDK Tester. It's our same SKUs, red button, green button, our buttons, index, and JS file. Let's move over here to our browser. We'll zoom in. So everybody see it's my EC2 instance, and then that same button folder. And if you remember, when we initialized our in-app purchase API, we tested to see if we were actually in test mode and we set up that alert, or if we were actually running on a device. So you're seeing that alert box right now for running in test mode. That was down here, if you recall. right here. So that same alert box, you can see it's finding out that we are in fact in test mode, and now we can go ahead and test out some in-app purchases. So I'll switch back over to our browser, we'll hit OK, and if I click this button, you'll notice over here the clicks left is at 9. I'm going to hit this button, and now you can see it's at 8 or 7. I can come in here and say I want to unlock the green button, now this is the mock-up from the JavaScript file that allows you to test in the browser itself. So that's 99 cents. And you may be asking yourself, Dave, where was that set up? If you remember over here in our SDK tester, the green button was set for 99 cents. We're going to click this button. We're going to process it. I'm going to close the window. And now you can see, rather than it being locked, it's actually set to green. And if I hit green, it's now active. And now my button is green. 
So very easy way to purchase uh, in-app things like colors for our button. Now let's go ahead and click this enough times that we're going to see five more clicks in the middle. This is our alert box. And you remember from the code, once we ran out of clicks, we'd ask them to buy more. So I can get 10 clicks for 99 cents. Let's say yes. Hit close. And now you can see I have 10 more clicks. Nice and easy way to test. So let's look at what that actually looks like on a device. I'll come over here. Now the first thing we need to do is load up our SDK tester app. Remember, this is the app that allows you to test in-app purchases on a device. Let me try and zoom in here so everybody can see. And I apologize, the focus isn't necessarily the best. Um, but this top bar up here, this is actually saying active transact. Oops, let's move this down. And let's try zoom three. I think that might be a little better. This one right here is active transactions. This is change user, and this is interactive mode. So if I hit at the top and I hit active transactions, you can see this is listing things that I've already purchased. So I've already purchased a green button in the past. And because that is stored, the next time that I run the application, I'll see that. I can change the user. So let me hit the back button here. And so it's set by default to default user. You could go in as another user. So while you're testing, if you want to reset all of your purchases, you have that ability. And let's hit back. And then I have interactive mode. And what interactive mode will do is it'll allow you in a test scenario to set up what you want to return. So rather than it always saying that it's been purchased, you can say already installed, you could say invalid SKU or failed, and you can set that up for everything. Hit back. So we've got this SDK tester running. Let's go ahead into the, oh, let me zoom out here for you. Here we go. So SDK tester is running. We're going to go into our app tester. And we're going to load our button. So this is our button sample down here. And this is the same URL that you notice we just did up here. Let's move this uh, inside of our Firefox browser. So now we're going to hit that same exact mobile website. Let me just click on the tab. You can see up here was a button. This is the one we just bought the clicks. So we tested it out on the web. And now we're going to test it out on the device. Let me hit Amazon Web View. And you'll see I'm getting the same button now that says running in test mode. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to do a new in-app purchase. I'm going to do red. So I'll hit red. Let me zoom in for you here. So you can see we're getting the message for red button, 99 cents. This is set through the JSON file now locally. I'm going to say purchase the red button, please. You'll see, thank you for purchasing red button. I'm going to close this. And you will see that our red button has now been unlocked right over here. So we're going to go ahead and hit red. And now our button's red. And then you can see here, as we go ahead and click down, all of that, those clicks are moving down. So this is the SDK sample deployed live on our own mobile website running on EC2. And then running locally as an app, we can deploy to the Amazon App Store through the web app tester tool and then using the SDK tester tool to simulate in-app purchases. Let's go ahead and move out of here. And I'm going to go back. And we're going to switch here to the SDK tester tool. And I just want to show you now, when I look at active transactions, you'll see the transactions that we just built. So let me try and zoom in a little bit here for you. So you'll see we also have both the green button and the red button. And this red button is the one that we just purchased. Okay. So we've seen how we can take our existing mobile web app. We can go into the developer portal at no cost. And we can set up that web app to run as an app within the Amazon App Store. We saw how easy it was to debug and test our apps on a physical device. And we saw how we can monetize our apps using the in-app purchasing API for JavaScript.
If you'd like to learn more, you can go to developer.amazon.com. Welcome. This was the developer portal that you saw me use today. You can ask for help on our forums. You can contact us at that link. Or you can follow us online over Twitter, Facebook, or the blog. Thank you for joining the webinar today. I'll post any questions that we have as Q&A for the webinar when we post the recording. So I'm going to leave the webinar open for a couple more minutes. If there's any additional questions that may crop up in your head and you want me to go ahead and answer them, I'll make sure that that's part of the official Q&A. Thank you for joining.